I'm doing totally good on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to talk about Twee. So returning to Twine 2.6 is some functionality that's been removed since the very early versions of Twine called Twee. And Twee describes a particular format, but let me kind of go into the details of why this is important and what it means as it returns as part of Twine 2.6. So if you've not used Twine a little bit, and you're returning as part of Twine 2.6, you may notice some interesting new functionality with the word Twee attached to it. In particular, and most notably, the build now has export as Twee. And what in the world does this mean? Well, the format called Twee actually predates the application named Twine by actually almost three years. It was first introduced way back in 2006, and here's what the kind of 2006 version of this looks like as an application called Twee, as well as a format called Twee, which is a little bit confusing, but the format has a lowercase t and the tool has an uppercase t. Um, this was also created by Chris Klimas back in 2006, and you'll notice this page is very hard to read at this point, because uh, the styling information is not available as part of the Internet Archive. But it was created for, to help authors describe an interactive story. And two of the main concepts that appear first in Twee in 2006 are carried over into Twine. That is, there are sections of a story and there are connections between them. So if it seems a little bit confusing at this, let's move over a little bit in history from 2006 to 2008. In 2008, we have a full documentation of how to use this format with two important concepts, again, reintroduced here. We have the idea of a passage, sections of a story, and the links, connections between them. In fact, you'll see right here, writing a first passage, add a second passage, building links, important concepts codified in 2008 as part of Twee. Now, if you're following along with this, you may think, okay, well, there's something created in 2008, or 2006, uh, standardized a little bit more in 2008. What does this have to do with Twine at all? Well, in 2009, Twine was introduced as a desktop application, and this allowed, at the time, the use of Twee, which predates Twine, to be used alongside with Twine. Twine could create HTML files that could be read in a, in a web browser, but also supported the Twee format. This changed, however, in 2015 with the introduction of Twine 2. And in fact, if you've used Twine at all, probably in the last several years, you're more used to this particular user interface or a similar one to this. This is part of the Twine 2 functionality. So from 2015 to 2023, Twee support wasn't available. Now, the reason why this is particularly important and the reason why I'm covering it in this video is there's a little bit of problem when it comes to kind of trying to understand and work with passages, sections of a story within Twine. So Twine stores data in HTML, hypertext markup language, and as part of two different concepts in that language, elements and attributes. Now, you don't necessarily have to understand that language or even what these concepts mean in connection to each other, other than it's a way to store data. So when we store data in this way, particularly in Twine, it can get a little bit complicated to read, and it looks a little like this. So even a single story with a single passage has many, many, many lines of code. Right here, just this particular example with Harlow 3.3 is very, very long lines of code that has lots of stuff going on, which can make it very hard for humans to read. In fact, even trying to understand this section right here, which kind of defines the data of a story, can be fairly complicated unless you're very well read at what all these little things mean. Instead, there is a companion format, the tweet format, that can re-encode the same data, but in a more easier to read and especially human readable format. So if we take this HTML and we convert it into the tweet format, we get this, which is far easier for humans to read than the previous HTML. The data is the same, but the formatting of it is different. And again, why is this important to us? Well, one, Twee format was added as part of Twine 2.6, and two, there is an entire document that extensively uses the Twee format that you might be familiar with. And it is, of course, called the Twine Cookbook. And all of its examples, right here, Twine 2 examples, include, along with the examples, if we click on one of these, the corresponding Twee code of how to use it. So this makes teaching stuff in Twine 
tied directly to the TWI format, which might be a little surprising to learn that the Twine Cookbook, which first started in 2017, extensively used the TWI format, but it took until 2023, several years later, for that format to finally be re-added to Twine 2.6. So what does this all mean? Well, this all means that if we want to learn to use stuff within Twine, one of the easier to read formats to see the content of sections of a story, what we call passages with Twine, can be represented in a particular format called Tweet. And commonly, we and more commonly, we will see that format, especially in learning resources moving forward, than we were to see the HTML version of all of this. Again, historically, Twee predates Twine, even if it wasn't available for a long time as part of Twine 2, but we now see it returning as Twine 2.6, which means authors who prefer to work in Twee or now want to work in Twine can all work together, because Twine 2.6 understands importing and exporting of the same format. This also means we can more easily express passages instead of using the HTML version. Again, this more complicated format, we can use a simpler format, and in fact, we often will see just this format right here. Where individual passages are expressed using two colons and then the content of the passage. This makes it much more easier to read, much more easier to explain. And when we're looking at a written format of Twine passages, we can look at this format rather than, again, looking at the more complicated HTML. Thanks for watching.